Rural areas of the state have unique challenges when it comes to aging baby boomers and changing demographics. And joining me in the studio to talk about his rural Minnesota Senate district is Senator Bill Weber of Laverne. Thanks for joining me today, Senator. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. The state demographer, Susan Brower, has said that rural areas are already, some rural areas are already experiencing the aging baby boomers and the effects of that and also a tight labor market because of the exodus of some of the younger generations to metro areas. Are you finding this to be true in your district? Well, yes, uh, the short answer is yes. I think to expand upon that a little bit, it, it is a trend that we have seen going on for uh, far too many years. Uh, unfortunately, one of our best exports from the rural areas has been our young people. Uh, and, and partly we're to blame for that from the standpoint that we uh, have had uh, an exodus of a lot of our rural manufacturing businesses uh, across the state line. Uh, for example, uh, years ago in Laverne, we had Laverne Fire Apparatus, Laverne Truck Equipment. Uh, they were both homegrown businesses, and due to the business conditions, uh, they moved across the state line. And they left Laverne with probably a combined workforce of uh, 70, 80 people, and they grew to 250. But that growth happened uh, across the state line. Now, they were close enough that some of the people were able to, they continued to live in Laverne because that was home and, and commuted to work. But in other instances, businesses have went too far, and that has, has not been possible. Uh, you know, and we see it in just in the general population shifts. When I was uh, first involved in uh, in Republican politics, uh, I was that was in 1976. I went to my first precinct caucus. Our Senate district at that time was four counties in the southwest corner of Minnesota. Today, my Senate district is all or parts of uh, nine counties. I have six in whole counties and parts of three other counties that comprise my Senate district. So we just see that in, in the ever-expanding size of our districts in the rural areas right. and, and probably the shrinking of size here in, in the metro area. So there's also the increased diversity that's happening. I know Worthington has been profiled several times um, because of the influx of immigrants, um, particularly uh, Latin American immigrants and Lao immigrants for meat processing plants and things like that. Um, Nobles County, from 2000 to 2010 saw the greatest increase in the immigrant population. Um, how's that playing out? Because I know, you know, Nobles County is, is separate from the other areas of your district, but are, are you seeing immigration in other areas also, and is that a possible solution? Well, I think that you do see it in other areas. Uh, for example, Marshall sits four miles outside of my district, and uh, and so you do see in, in terms of they have uh, turkey processing, other food processing plants there, and so you see that same type of thing happening in, in that scenario. And, and I think that, that it does, in those particular communities, it does uh, increase the um, number of younger people as children you know, come with their families into the area. Uh, obviously, it creates uh, some uh, additional dynamics for your school districts because they're having to deal with a, a large uh, enrollment in terms of, of trying to teach them English to begin with sure. and, and then also um, um, a lot of times these younger people are sort of serving then as sort of the liaison between the parents and the community because mm -hmm. they can understand and speak English and mm -hmm. the parents have, have, not, uh, have not learned that. So, um, but it also creates uh, an unusual dynamic in the Worthington School District, for example. Uh, I don't know the exact number again, but it's, it's well over 30 different languages are spoken there. Right. And so it, it becomes a real, so that's a, uh, a real challenge. Yeah. Yes. Um, can we talk about doctor and dental care briefly? There was an article recently in the Star Tribune that said that in the metro area there's one doctor per 300, and in certain rural districts it's one doctor per 2,000. Is your district experiencing um, a lack of health care, um, health care workers like um, some areas already are, and it's projected to increase? We have. Um, in my particular district, um, my hometown of Laverne, of course, is 30 miles from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, which has 
large right, uh, health care yeah. facilities there. They have actually over the years, what Laverne, when I was a councilman uh, and mayor, uh, we had we had a city-owned hospital, had forever. Uh, I was uh, on the hospital board for eight years. Uh, when, during my term as mayor, why the hospital was sold to Sioux Valley, now called Sanford. Mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, Sioux Valley, Avera, McKinnon that have a lot of different associations in our communities. And so, um, Yes, having adequate health care uh, personnel is always an issue, uh, but because of the affiliations that have been made with these larger facilities, uh, typically there is an avenue for service to be provided. Not always is every service available within someone's hometown, mm -hmm. but uh, within a reasonable travel distance, uh, those type of services are. So this brings up the concern of transportation. As these baby boomers age and maybe can't drive, or need help. Um, what are your thoughts on how those people might be able to get to their doctor appointments or get their daily needs, you know, grocery shopping, et cetera? Well, we have, uh, we do have uh, a system in place, uh, you know, that does, is able to provide transportation services. We have a, an extensive volunteer system uh, mm -hmm. for a lot of our retired people that are willing to go out and, and drive these individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but uh, within, within the transportation system, we, we do have, uh, you know, Heartland services, a lot of different, these uh, bus services that are able to, to take people. Mm -hmm. Probably from a medical standpoint, one of the greatest challenges that we have is that the Medicaid-funded transportation is so messed up mm -hmm. that many of our medi uh, medical transportation service providers want nothing to do with Medicaid patients mm -hmm. because they aren't being paid, they aren't being paid nearly enough, or, um, or what we're seeing is that a lot of our in, uh, institutions, whether it's our nursing homes or hospitals, quite frankly, are eating some of this cost sure. just because the state program is totally messed up at this point. So I know health care is going to come up again in the future, but that's all the time we have for today. I hope to have you back. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure being here. <laughs>